All right, cool. I'm not sure how to get the recordings off of this and make a video, but somebody can do it. And then they can chop yeah, it someone up. will figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, like for the first part, yeah. what's up? What are you guys up to doing? Um, yeah, so this is the first farm we've been at where they've been integrating animals um, into like, you know, they're trying to do regenerative agriculture. And that was one of the cool things besides them having like a little kid, like an almost 18 month old. We're like, okay, so they're going to be like in the rhythms of kids where the other places we just had like old people. Yeah. And not a lot of animals other than chickens. So, you know, we've been learning a lot about, you know, well, regenerative agriculture, right? Like that's a very large umbrella, but specifically like, you know, multi-species grazing, you know, trying to develop silvo pastures, um, you know, tending the gardens and then, uh, you know, just kind of general farm chores. Like every day the chickens get fed, the pigs get fed. Uh, you know, we helped wrangle sheep to check their hooves and, their eyeballs to make sure like oh, that'd be cool. you know, they're not sick right so that was fun to do and then um you know just that that's it right like i mean that's the bulk of what we're doing in addition to cooking hanging out uh enjoying company um and then just being outside more right like it's like nothing's like overly complicated and we're like what are we filling our days with <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you know, because we'll get well, you know, we look back at the projects because the bulk of the work happens in the first half of the day, and then the second half of the day is just like taking naps, moving, or whatever else. And um, since we've been here, I've been leading like barefoot fitness classes in the morning. So there's like a couple from Belgium, there's us, and then there's the host family, two adults and one small child. And so we've been working out, and now that we have the uh the rigs in the background and maybe I'll go drag this over if the Wi-Fi is good. Um, oh yeah, you know, we, I saw those pictures. Those are pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, he bought a draw knife cause he's like, Oh, that's super cool. Let's buy a draw knife. And so I was working, you know, I draw knifed everything and, you know, never done that. Right. And I was like, how hard is this? Is this really complicated? And it's, yeah. it's not, but there's definitely a learning curve to proficiency, right? Like yeah. I was effective, but it's not clean. Right. Yeah, it <laughs> so takes then I'm a while like, to clean those poles. It takes a while to clean them and then like sap, like that's a whole nother thing that I didn't even think of, like time of year when there's more sap, uh, you know, but one of the really cool things, like the guy from Belgium, he's like, oh yeah, ash works really good to get the sap off your hands. And so then I was like, okay, like if it works good to get the soap or the sap off your hands, if I rub this whole log down with uh, ash, right, does that help get the sap off? And it was it actually worked really well. And that was like the last log I did. Um, it was also the biggest log I did. So it was really cool. So the, you know, we've been having a fire every night. So I took the handfuls of ash, rubbed the whole thing down, and then it was like bone dry. And then it sanded so much better. Um, well, that's a good idea. We've, we've stripped a lot of, uh, lodgepole pines for our teepees yeah. and yeah. shelters. And, uh, that's a good tip. We'll do yeah. that this, uh, next fall yeah. when we get some pole. Yeah. Up. Yeah. And it worked, you know, cause you know, I, like then there was a guy at this other intentional community not far from here. Uh, he was like, you know, some like depending on the size, the age, the time of year, like there could be sap. But if there's less sap, then the bark adheres to the the lolly. Uh, these are all lob lolly pines that were taken down. He's like, the bark will adhere to it a little bit harder, so it's actually like more difficult to draw a knife off. But it's like he's like, it just depends, right? So like, what are the trade offs? Um, which I was just like, you just cut down a tree and go, right? Like that's <laughs> not thinking about, is there a better time of year? Um, and then, you know, by the last iteration, I was like, oh, this is how to best do this, right? Um, which is cool um, to figure out and play with just by doing. And, you know, that was something I was like, man, I should have just built a bunch of this shit somewhere <laughs> in the woods and not opened up my gym. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and, I know, right? you know, but you know, it was cool because like you built your own stuff and I, you know, I had that highbrow, like very cool equipment. But I think, you know, given what I was trying to do and who I was trying to serve, like having that polished, noticeably safer equipment worked well. Like, yeah, and it, it was more well modular. The, the area yeah. you were in, like the yeah, appearances yeah. of that. Um, yeah. And, it, you know, so, you know, people in a commercial gym setting want to see like, oh, this looks safe. This looks manufactured. Right. Um where if it's on your property, then it's like, whatever. <laughs> uh, you know, and then for Bodhi, uh, he and I had a birthday um, pretty close together. And he actually turned six on Mardi Gras. So we went down to New Orleans oh, and nice. did like big city Mardi Gras, which was wild. 
Oh, that um, was cool. So that was kind of fun to be like in it, having not been around that many people for a while. But then he and I went camping and I ended up getting him a knife for his birthday. And like, he's like, you know, sharpening marshmallow sticks and like for other kids that happen to be at this campground too. So it was really cool to like yeah. get a little bit of that um, camping away from just sleeping in our camper on the farm and, you know, watching him like feel so cool about having a knife. Right. And like, he's walking around, he's got no shirt on, he's got shorts, he's got like the string uh, with his knife sheath, like around his body. It's super fun. And he's just like living it up here. Um, and just having yeah, so a great time. Went from uh, like, like the pinnacle of civilization, like New Orleans during yeah. Mardi Gras to yeah, back yeah, out yeah, the yeah. woods. That's a good job. Yeah. Yeah. To see. yeah. And it was and like around other people um, who were just like out there on the land. Uh, that community is doing some really cool stuff as far as building an intentional community. Um, not centered around agriculture right now, just like how do we get people here to sustain the land? And they they butt up right next to the national forest that's here in Mississippi. So they have like a hundred acres, but then they're adjacent to the national forest. Oh, that's um, nice. so, which is like which is so much. Um and there's like all kinds of uh gopher tortoises. It's like a big keystone species down here. And so they're gonna have like a gopher tortoise day um in March when they should be coming out of their burrows. Oh. Uh which is pretty cool. And I guess like, uh, I think it's 300 different species utilize gopher tortoise tunnels um, and burrows. Oh, geez. Which is like Let really the turtles cool. do the work. The tortoise do the work, right? And then move the in. The tortoise does the work. And then everybody yeah. else like just, which is really cool, right? Like you're like, wow, that's wild. Like 300 species are dependent on a gopher tortoise, which is, you know, it's endangered in this area. So it's been cool to learn about that um, from them. And Bodhi's been doing forest school out there. Um, which is really cool that they have this forest school at this community once a month and uh, or twice a month. Technically it's like Saturdays for school kids who are in normal public school and then Mondays for homeschool kids. And he does both. And so he gets like the same lesson twice, which is really cool because he's gleaned new insights from each one. So like the first day they went, it was like really cold here for Mississippi. Like it was like in the twenties and like, so none of, no one's used to that weather. Like we saw single digits here for real fields um, in January, which is wild. Um, Cause it doesn't get a hard frost like that here. Uh, yeah, that's like, like their frost uh, line. Like jacket yeah. weather. <laughs> yeah. Their frost line is eight inches. Right. <laughs> wow. <laughs> which is wild. Right. And so like, everyone's like, Oh my gosh, your kids are going to die outside. We're like, they'll be fine. <laughs> they'll be fine. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, but they, they learned about insulation. So they had kids bring extra large clothes and they were stuffing their uh, all their clothes with pine needles and leaves yeah. to help stay warm. And I was like, oh, that's really cool. Then they built like a, a ridgeline shelter, right? So they had to like go find a str- like a strong log or stick. And then like, you know, how can we all keep warm? Like, well, you we all pile in together. So I think the age range is like four to 10. So it's all these kids being led by a couple elders uh, and like learning this stuff. And then the last one was fire. Um, and so they were learning how to manage fire, the importance of fire and stuff we like have that. Our, uh, the UV kids program yeah. has started. We've yeah. got, um, a homeschool group and then an after school kind of hybrid group in the, in the second yeah. half of the afternoon. Yeah. And, uh, we're going to, we're coming up to the end of the first, uh, eight week unit here. We're going to go to the park mm. and then we're going to start the shelters. I'm saving the fire stuff. So we've got late ages four to like 14. Uh, yeah. saving that for like the third unit just for responsibility wise but do you uh yeah. just off the topic do you know when you and annie and the boys are gonna be rolling by here because I'd, I'd love to have you guys come by for uv kids at some point yeah you know that's a so we're gonna be in south dakota for june uh, my family wants to do a reunion uh, my side of the family wants to do a, like a small reunion in south dakota so okay. we'll be there in J- mid-june and then annie wants a try to figure out are we going to be in wisconsin or the region um for like the le- like the last part of summer so we'll be mobile like but that's like we don't have okay. anything after june so right now the the tentative timeline is to you know i was trying to line up some work in california for that women's health um thing that i was going to work with uh that natural movement organization on but i've since parted ways okay and uh you know, so now I own it fully as my thing. Um, and so I was talking to them about it. Um, 
two MCTs out there in Fresno. One of them, she's like a psychologist. And, you know, I've had conversations with her about, you know, whether doing like uh, men's work, masculine stuff, or even just women's health, natural movement focus, because, you know, she herself had a lot of issues being a mom postpartum, like having trouble with like the foot pinch and other things. Was she and, one like, of the women at the the 50 plus MCT Danny uh, Clark and I did a few years ago? No, there? no, no. I think you're thinking of uh, the client I had for a while, Kim. Kim was yeah. cool. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, she, yeah. Um, she got into a recent car accident. Um, oh, it yeah. is all banged up. Yeah. Um, but doing well, because I reached out to her. No, this is a woman who originally trained um, in Oregon with Diana and has since moved to Southern or Central California. Um, and her background is psychology. And that's why I was reaching out to her initially was like men's work stuff um, and how movement can play a role into helping men regulate their lives so that they can hold better space in their households Um, because their kids are always going to get services to be regulated when they go back to dysregulated households, Uh, which, you know, it's funny. I've been like not seeing a lot of that, but hearing a lot of stories of like all these women taking up masculine spaces in society. Uh, Like I went to go give a talk on like uh, the program, the guide, it's like a 30 page guide I created for moving through the feminine seasons and so it's, you know, the, the seasons of, of feminine seasons I identify are menstrual. So like menstruating women, um, then pregnancy, postpartum, and then peri slash menopause. So those are the four main seasons and how movement can support women through those seasons. And so like, I go to this like professional and personal development forum with like all these women and I'm like talking about this and they're like, oh, this is so cool. This is so great. And I was like, yeah, you know, if you're on your period, tell your husband, like, he's got to pick up the slack because that's your time to rest. That's winter. And they're like, can you say that again? <laughs> like, because they don't believe us that like, that is a harder time of life. Well, those right? seasons, that, that kind of parallels yeah. like the, the mother maiden crone sort of. Yeah. 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 But instead of times was... of, of like ages of life, more like seasons that are going to like. Yeah. Eat. Yeah. 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 And that was the really cool thing to like have this space where these women kind of got it and they're searching for like, what are those archetypes of women, right? Like you just mentioned, and how does movement support us during those times, right? And that it can look different and that women's hormones are different than men's hormones. Yeah. And it was just, it was really empowering. And so there was a lot of great feedback and, you know, again, like being a man stepping into a space of nothing but women talking about menstruation and menopause and like it wasn't there was no one that was like oh what do you know they were like oh thank you for doing this we wish more men would do this work well what um, you just hold said that, about hold um, that space the women stepping into the the masculine space we've had a lot of um that you know i have four boys that just i always worried about the a- abdication of the the masculine and that's why those spaces yeah. are being filled uh even in uncivilized vitality we started out uh years ago it was 100 percent men it was just us kind of going out and then we got one or two women would come along. And then for quite a while, we we're 50-50. And now on our events, sometimes we're seeing uh, it's more women than men. We just did yeah. the uh, Women's Winter Wonderland Camp. Yeah. Didn't get much snow. We got some mm-hmm. low teens, upper 20s. We had a you know a dozen women go build their shelters and do all that. And then yeah. um, I, I'm interested for maybe later in the year. Actually, that reminds me. I was trying to get you... See if we can rendezvous in Pennsylvania around June for the rattlesnake hunt, but you're going to be in South Dakota. We'll try it yeah. next year. But later <laughs> in the year, I wanted to get you up here uh, and collaborate on one of your uh, men's workshops. I think the UV yeah. community could use that. Mm. That would yeah. be something we could yeah. try to plan for the fall. Yeah. And, you know, I was talking to, on that note of like, how do we get men to reclaim their their wild masculinity, their divine, ma- whatever you know, adjective we want to put in front of masculinity that's not a la Andrew Tate and dysmorphic, right? Uh, kind of sort of thing. To not throw Andrew Tate under the bus, but like it's easy to be like, yeah, he's kind of a misogynist. Um, and yeah, well, when you get too far uh, in yeah. an archetype and you go uh, archetypes yeah. exist on a continuum, you go too far to one end. I mean, yeah, brilliant yeah, we aspects, have, we have, but you get the negative too. Yeah. Yeah, you have the light and the shadow, and those are both extreme versions of that balanced yeah. archetype, right? And so, you know, we we tried to do an event here, but then like the thunderstorms that were um, for yesterday and today kind of 
or forced us to postpone it. But like, you know, I was talking to all these other folks at this other center and then the folks who were here and, you know, our strategy is like to make it family friendly or couple friendly and target the women. Like we, you know, that was some of the feedback I got at that women's group was like, oh, I'll bring my husband to that because he needs it. Like I'm hearing women go, oh, my man needs this. My partner needs this. My son needs this. And like, we have to make it like we invite the women and then they have to drag unbeknownst to them, like some secret, <laughs> like, uh, yeah. you know, like underlying, like we're not, you know, you know, and then they come and they go, oh, this was fun. Right. And, you know, ideally it's fun, but now we've had to revamp it. Cause a lot of people were asking, like, can you make it family kid friendly? So now we're just doing movement. We're not going to break off into masculine and feminine groups. Um, to do some like sharing circles and stuff because it's just like more people who want to bring their kids. So we're iterating on the plan and just doing that instead. But that was a lot of the feedback and information we were getting so far on this journey is like, can you target women and then make it like co-ed and they bring their partners to get we, yeah. introduced to this stuff, right? We've had the same. Um, we have to. Hi, John. Hey, Annie, how's it going? Do you want to put it your buddy and we're recording? Oh, you're recording. <laughs> I already got to ride Buttercup and Fluss and Mama did. Hey, Bodie. You things? got to ride a horse? And Mommy oh, and Fluss. Yeah. Did you get to ride a horse? And Fluss and Mommy and Dad. Yeah, did ride you ride a horse? And... Where's Forrest Dad? Is he still on the horse? No. No, he's walking around. He did ride the horse. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. No, yeah. no saddle, no nothing. Just... Yeah, bareback riding. Did you get a knife for your birthday, <laughs> Bodie? He can't hear you. You're on uh -oh. earbud. John asked if you got a knife. Yes. What do you think of your knife? Good. Did you cut yourself? Yeah. Got to get an inaugural cut, right? <laughs> yeah. Look at that. You see that knife? Who's that? That's John's knife. Oh. Yeah. He's got one, too. All right. Can That's mommy and daddy talk knife. for a little bit? I want to... All right. All right. Let me see if I could take you guys off earbuds. And we'll do a different... Ah. How's that? Can you hear us? Yeah, yeah, I can hear it. All right, all right. We'll take it off your butt so Bodhi can talk can and be a part of it. Straighten the sound so follow me. <laughs> yeah. Wow. All right, where were we? Well, actually, <laughs> the three of you on cameras uh, kind of neat because I was just saying how with Uncivilized, we try to do everything family, but then we've, yeah. had, to, we've had to have specific, like the women's only winter camp and I have a yeah. uh, man, we do, we call it man camp in the fall. And yeah. uh, basically we just go up and we'd stand around and we, we cook and eat a lot of meat and just, uh, you know, yeah. fraternize for the weekend. And then we've done a lot of kids events, but uh, getting the integration at the family camp in August is always kind of the big thing. And you guys obviously are uh, yeah. welcome if you get in this region to come by first weekend in August. Yeah. He was saying, ask when we we're going to come back through to do some UV kids and possibly some yeah. other stuff as well. Yeah. Um, oh, one I of the, yeah. 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 I, I was going to. You guys have been gone since through here. He came through, I think, was a September. So that's last year. Yeah. That's been a while. Yeah. Um, I was going to share this, but now that Annie's here, I'll let her speak more to it because, you know, part yeah. of this journey is restoration, healing, and whatnot. And she's had the opportunity to engage in different dance. Healing. We'll say just different dance therapies. And I'll let her talk about that. Just, just ecstatic dance. You can learn ecstatic dance, John. Yeah, yeah like, I've heard of it. It's like, it's just like you play music. Like I, well, one of them was at a beach, which was fun. It was like, we all got headphones and most of the music. And you just, you know, you just dance around, like whatever. Or you don't, or you lay in the sand, whatever, whatever feels right to you, right? Based on the music. And it's like usually elemental driven, like, like a lot of the music is sometimes driven by the elements. So like. I'm not a music person, but like, you know, like, comp, like fire, or yeah, fire, earth, yeah. water. It, well, yeah. you guys know how I feel about music, so it's just a, <laughs> it's yeah. the noise. Yeah. But yeah. that might be an yeah. autistic uh, bias. But were you wearing yeah. the headphones? You said each person. One of them. One one time we were at a beach and we got headphones and there was a DJ, so we were all hearing the same thing, but we could have our own solo experience. And then, um, so from a distance, it looked like. You could be in the water. You could be in the water. You could be in oh. the sand. Like you could just walk around and yeah. however you wanted to move, you know, 
Um, and it was like for an hour. The other one was um, just speakers, um, but in like a yeah. little cob building down by a pond. So it was like. What I was interested in, it was the whole experience and how you shared with me and sharing this um, is like how movement, music and processing emotion. Yeah. Um, the value. Can, yeah, yeah. The value you received from yeah, it. Yeah. For me. Yeah, oh, yeah. Like, music has a huge role in, in well, in energy flow, right? Like energy flow through the body and. um well, movement, so that, uh, that movement, emotion, and that helps with emotion. Yeah, we would keep all our emotions in our musculoskeletal uh, framework, and movement's yeah. the expression of that. And then, when you think about music from like a classic uh, liberal arts uh, education, music came right after arithmetic. So, number theory, and then number theory in uh, you know in time and space. That's music. So those three go together. Um, mm -hmm. again, I think it's my bias. I don't really care for music or dancing. My wife and my, the boys are excellent dancers. They're always bopping around to the noise. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's great. Um, that, is that something you're going to, you guys well, like, are going to incorporate? Things, but for me, but John, I think the other thing, key piece is combining the music with being in nature, right? It's not like you're dancing in a, in, a in, in an inside space. Well, that's, like, yeah. Me, that's a good point. Like, like, like a be, drumming be, be, is being yeah. outside. I think also being outside by fire is really like. Like all the things that like you do, you know, about like being outside in an uncivilized sense, but like then it's like adding in that music element. Right, yeah. Um, I'm just picturing like I'm Native American dances with the fire because they had, I mean, they did that, uh, yeah. you know, at certain times of the month and the moon cycle in the year. Yeah. yeah. Well, and then like Norse That's people, super. like pay the pagans in Europe, yeah. you know, there's always that like good like drumming and vocals and like, you know, there's that. I thought that was really cool. And it's funny, again, we're talking about spaces, like the woman who facilitates it, she says there's like sometimes one dude, but it oh, was mostly, mostly it was mostly women. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's Would almost you know, a, a feminine energy to some kinds of dance and uh, the, you know, the stereotypical uh, order of chaos kind of dichotomy of the dance and then the, the fighting with male's yeah. version of, of dancing. But this reminds me, remember uh, years ago when MoveNet was kind of still holding it together and i tried to talk about a fourth domain about yeah, expressive remember, remember movement yeah fourth domain yeah. of what expressive movement so sex and dancing yeah right? yeah so expressive movements and then uh yeah. I, I was talking to Erwan about it. he's like he's like no that's just you know like what birds do yeah but i mean you know it made sense what he said but it made me laugh because yeah yeah. yeah, but it's been, it's been like, you know, I remember when Annie shared it, I was like, that's really cool. And I think about again, like in, in the rewild or the uncivilized sense, like people would have gathered around fire, they would have played music, they would have sung songs, and they yeah. would have processed. Like, I think about how many groups of people are known for their grieving ceremonies, and that is music. Well, and right? I think what was interesting too, both, both times I gathered, it was, it was with a group of people. Yeah, bud? Um, and, um, it wasn't just dancing, right? Like first we circled. First we circled. We set an intention. We had cacao. It was a little cacao ceremony. Oh yeah. Heart met, you know, like we did cacao. We set an intention. We did some warm ups together. You know, like there was there was a there was this like connection and community aspect first before we moved. You know, and then we re regrouped after. And so to me, that like community and connection, um, and intention setting. You know, it wasn't just like here's put on your headphones and dance, right? It was like right, the whole cycle, whole cycle to it. Yeah, yeah. Um, That's but, cool. I was just talking about, um, actually, I don't know if the video came up yet. I was talking about how nature exists in hierarchies, but humans exist in social circles and networks, not necessarily hierarchies. And, you know, everything happens in cycles, what you're just talking about. That's uh, that's cool to see those those principles, uh, like, happening for people and, and being recognized that way. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Bodhi, was that the horse that you were riding that just walked by? Yeah. Oh yeah, her Buttercup yes. did just walk by, didn't she? Yeah. Buttercup. Holy yeah. smokes, that's a big horse, buddy. Yeah. And there's all the cows and the sheep. How many? How many lambs have been born here since oh, we've been here? Seven. I think more. Oh. I think it's have been oh, born this spring. Yeah. Yeah. Baby lambs. You see a lot of. You see a lot of. So a lot of mating. Now there's see a lot of mating. Yeah. There's a lot of. Is that Forrest that just ran by behind you? Yeah, that was that was Forrest. Forrest. Yeah, Forrest, do you want to come say hi? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Hey, how's it going, Forrest? Hi. 
Still have your sword? <laughs> Still got he's a got sword. Three, he's actually got more. How many swords do you have in your hand right now? Oh, there was a group. So there's all these different like mini parades in New Orleans during Mardi Gras. And like going through the different neighborhoods and whatnot. And they're all called uh, Cruise. K-R-E-W-E. -E. Um, and there was a small contingent. And they, I don't know if, I forget the exact name of their crew or their little club, but they were handing out business cards with two words on it, Memento Mori. Oh, and nice. I thought that was really cool. And this woman was just going by. They all have like kind of that like uh, De La Muerto, like face paint on. Yeah. And they're like, we're all going to die. What is your life even about? And like, it was just really cool to see at this like huge celebratory thing, right? Like people just like, Hey, you're going to die. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. I was like, Oh man, I really want to get one of those cards to just tack it up somewhere. But I didn't, you know, they just hand out randomly to whomever, but I thought that was cool um, to see people in this huge ginormous festival, just asking people to remember death. But then it was funny. There was this couple in front of me who got the business card. They're like, what does this even mean? And I was like, Oh, it's sad. You should go look it up. Yeah. It means you're too civilized. You need you're missing your yeah. life. Yeah. 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 All right. Yeah. <laughs> so um we can keep talking afterwards, but I'll I'll end the part where we're uh, recording. If you guys just want to let um let people know what you're doing, because uh, you know, here there'd be tigers and the, the channel and yep. such, get a little little shade yeah, there yeah. so I can get people over towards you. For the most part, you know, we've we've kind of I don't know. I was going through this big push on Instagram of social media stuff, and we've we haven't been giving energy to the these tigers go wild on YouTube, and it's, I'm just balancing this like frustrations with like, is there gatekeeping? Is this where I want to put my energy? Yeah, you know, like really getting caught up in like the farm work and stuff like that, <laughs> and you know, wanting to set that intention to work through the beads, um, essentially because that's what Andy and I talked about. It's like, oh, we want to work through the beads, right, and some other stuff. Um, and it's not that it's hard here, but like, you know, figuring out where we want to put our energy is definitely a thing. And I, I definitely think I want to do more long format stuff and not Instagram stuff. So really giving energy. Yeah, that's a lot of work. But right? I think what you were getting into, like, what are we doing now? What, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Doing? But like what I'm getting at is like, you know, yeah. as we transition from this farm and get back out on the road, like cultivating that time to like yeah. do more uncivilized vitality book work, essentially, like. How are we developing these skills like the field craft and other things um, and finding that intentional time and making that more a part of our day to day rhythm where like when we're on a farm, that's our rhythm. Like we're learning farming and stuff like that, um, which is really and fun. Part of this community, right? Then you're also integrating with other people. Yeah. Which, um, yeah, you're probably yeah. checking the beads off without even knowing it, just living the way you guys are living. Yeah. So that's a, yeah. Yeah. you know, anytime you guys want to uh, check in, send something to, uh, a notice to Caitlin or uh, Rendell or me, and uh, we'll get it up on the channel just so people can check in with how you're doing. Yeah, one of the things Annie and I both want to do is a review of your book, either separately or together. We meant to we... do it like three months, four, yeah. five months ago. Yeah, <laughs> we've, been, we've been done, but um, we've been talking about it with everybody here. And, it, you know, I'm like, yeah. if you want, like, I would say the definitive book, right? Like, I need a textbook to tell me how to live my life differently. I'm like, this is the book, right? Nice. Like, um, cause again, like, you know, there's a lot of information out there, but what's, what's behind some of that. Right. Um, yeah. and it, it just like, Hey, this is it. Here's authentic quality information. You decide whether or not you want to take it or leave it, but this is the good stuff. And I think yeah, that's the key. We're not, industry, right? how we're much not pushing an agenda on anyone. Yeah. How much snake oil exists in the health and fitness industry, right? All, almost all of it. And, well, you know, you know they say a, a, a patient cured is a customer lost. So that's, yeah. Uh, yeah. you know, and I think that's, that's a great example of, you know, the work I'm trying to do in rewilding, the work you're doing with Uncivilized Vitality in your books is like, we want people to have, to be empowered and have agency, yeah. right? Yeah, sure. And yeah. not need you anymore. Yeah. we I, I took some pictures. Yeah. Send it to well, me. yeah, I'll put those in. Well, you know, the ultimate goal is like we, Carrie Ann and I have the four boys. Uh, the whole point of putting the uncivilized books together and volume two will be out here in a couple months. Volume three will wait to the end of the year. But the idea was, if, uh, and I joke, if I stepped out and got hit by a bus, at least I've got it written down now so the boys can get, you know, this is what dad said was a like the way to 
be as yeah. vital as possible to live. And you've got two boys, so the giving agency is not just necessarily to other people, but it's to this next yeah. generation. If we don't help and support them and fix them, we're screwed. Yeah, yeah. the amount, we've talked a lot about um, the couple from Europe, we've talked about uh, Gen Z and, you know, they're fighting back pretty hard against like status quo establishment stuff, but then they have like no skills, right? Like they yeah. don't want to work at a computer, but then they like, they don't know how to cook. Well, they've been disarmed. Like that's intentional. They've been civilized. Yeah. Civilization, yeah. I've been saying lately, is the is nothing but the sophistry and illusion of psychopaths. And mm -hmm. we let the psychopaths run it so long that now we have uh, very little ability to escape yeah. being civilized or being re. You know, you need programs like rewilding, yeah. uh, like you guys are doing, like getting out there and getting people back in touch with what it means to be a human. Uh, yeah. Randy up here in the local town, uh, Randy Bowler through Ethos Show, they run the How to Be Human program. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, yeah. They've done that, you know, yeah. uh, a few years now, and they're they're running through I think their third or fourth cohort this year. Yeah. And we do the graduation ceremony. Uncivilized Vitality provides uh, an excursion out into the mm -hmm. forest for the graduation each fall, and that's been great to see those people come through there. Yeah. They and that's exclusively, that's exclusively women, right? Uh, yeah, as far as I know, that's exclusively women, and they do a bang up job with it. Yeah, yeah, and I think you know, I think so much about like it's cool that women are seeing this like resurgence in like honoring that divine feminine. Yeah, um, and I I think about having. All right, Annie, see you, see you next time. Bye, Bodie. Yeah. I'll be Bye, done in forest. a little bit. Of course. Um, you know, so as you know, as we're we're getting ready to head out towards like Texas after this trip. But one of the things I think about is like, you know, I bought Bodie a knife for his sixth birthday because like, I want him to learn like, okay, this seems like a reasonable age, yeah. right? Where well, he can start to learn some of those skills. And I think, you know, again, how to be human, like, what does it mean to be a man? What does it mean to like hold that space? All these things, right? And uh, reclaim some of that. And I, I'm sad in somewhat that more stuff like that doesn't exist for young boys, right? But like men aren't holding those spaces. I think about the women who would come to move Nat Madison. They're like, oh, thanks for doing a camping trip. Um, can you teach me how to hunt so I can teach my son how to hunt? Yeah. I'm like, when you're, where are the men? <laughs> right? And that's constantly a thing. Um, where are the men? Um, and they're there. Right? I guess. I don't know. Well, it's been, you know, almost a war on manhood. Like the, 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 <clears throat> Yeah. The pejorative uh, toxic masculinity has uh, yeah. been floated around, pushed pretty heavily for the last few years, and that's yeah, yeah. that's sad. You can't just throw toxic on a, on something as an adjective and expect no. it to necessarily mean anything. That's just sophistry at its finest. Yeah, and how many men are dying, you know, each day, each week, right? Majority of suicides in this country are male. Um, less and less men are going into the workforce, are going into colleges higher education in general right whether it's tech school or you know four-year degrees yeah they're disappearing right um but all that to be said like that's a whole separate video maybe um but you know we're gonna head to texas to do some uh dispersed camping potentially and see annie's sister and um our nephew uh while they're on spring break on along the gulf coast in texas and then after that like you know if i line up that work in california we're just kind of like exploring maybe go out west, maybe go to the Pacific Northwest, but basically between, we'll say, end of March through June, we have like an open itinerary. And nice. I'm happy to go anywhere and everywhere. Um, but yeah, we're just going to try to spend as much time in nature and as much time just trying to, you know, figure out what we want to do at the end of the year. <laughs> okay, so in the spring, you guys are going to be mobile for the entire spring, basically. Yeah, we're going to be mobile for the entire spring. You know, nice. we do have, we want to go try to see the Grand Canyon. Um but other than that, like, we don't have a hard timeline. And okay. it's been kind of nice to not have this, like, what are we doing, right? What are we doing? Where are we going? Um, and we'll just, like, you know, the universe will hopefully open the door for us. Oh, yeah. It always does put you where you need to be. But yeah. hopefully you'll end up up here in the, you know, the fall or the winter back toward the Michigan uh, region. Yeah. We, got, uh, we got some uh, late September. We're going up to the uh, Keweenaw Peninsula. Yeah, at the mm -hmm. top of the Upper Peninsula, out at Copper Harbor, we're going to do some uh, cave yeah. uh, exploring and spelunking, okay. looking for some of the mines. Yeah. I was looking at land um, up north in Michigan, 
uh just see i'm just looking at what land costs yeah uh, and trying to figure out where we want to hang our hats a little more semi-permanently the um, upper peninsula is still um true like american wilderness there's <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well i was this... looking at normal michigan not up so oh yeah normal michigan the lower normal peninsula michigan. Yeah, yeah. Normal. Um, that's because that, you know, like you know, being down here in Mississippi, like with some of the crazy weather they've had, and the soil's very sandy, water and clay, so water doesn't stay here as well. And you know, it's winter time, and we're seeing eighty degree days with eighty, ninety um, percent humidity. And from like you know, for whatever impact is having on the climate or not having, like, yeah, I don't want to be this far south. Right. Yeah. Even the winter here was mild. We barely had yeah. any snow this year. Yeah. Temperatures didn't dip below zero. I think only a couple times, which I personally find tragic. I like single digits. Yeah. And the best no, part of Michigan, there's no venomous reptiles. Yeah. No, and that's that's down here. Like snakes are a thing. All kinds of stuff. And you know, we're like, okay, like where do we go that has like a moderate climate, um, has better, we'll say, libertarian views on land ownership and what you can do on your land. Um, but then access to like an organic food co-op for why we need it and some levels of like-minded community. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's like the... you know, until, until you establish your perennial food systems. Um, right. Which has been fun to learn about perennial food systems down here on this farm. Uh, cause that's, you know, like when you think about it, like what is longevity, right? Like perennial, right. If I have to plant annual vegetables, is that, is that sustainable? If I'm right. seed safe and other stuff? Yeah. But you know, it's it's been interesting to have those conversations here with other people. Like, yeah, yeah, we need food. So when shit hits the fan, like, do we have enough guns, ammo, and skill sets? <laughs> yep. Yeah. Well, animals and it, are food. Plants are medicine. Are so food. just keep yeah. that in mind. <laughs> yeah. No, and it's you know, like that's where most of the infrastructure has been. Like, here is developing, you know, animals, and and food systems, like plant food systems, to sustain those animals. Right. Um, like growing plants to feed them, not growing plants to eat ourselves. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. It's not calorically dense enough. No, no. You just get You got to graze all day like a cow if that's uh, that's your plan. Yeah. Without the ruminant stomach structure that a cow has. Yeah. Not going to work. Yeah. Like, uh, you know, people always like gorillas eat plants. And I'm like, yeah, but their small intestine is like three times as long as ours. Yeah, yeah, actually. Yeah. That's like, they're they're designed to do that. Plus they're designed to do that, yeah. And you need that long of a small intestine to break plant matter down to extract amino acids. It's really simple anatomy. Um Yeah. It always comes like, back you, to anatomy. Yeah. Anatomy is truth. Yeah, exactly. Um like people like you know, like, oh wolves are carnivores. I'm like, yeah, but if you look at their digestive tract and ours, it's pretty similar with that and a pig, right? Like they're pretty similar. We're closer um, to that end of the spectrum for sure, digestively. Yeah. But people, it's hard, you know, because there's there's so much morality tied into it and dogma. I'm like, it is what it is, man. You can't make it something that it's not. Yeah. Um, boys and girls. <laughs> yeah. What? Yeah. what? <laughs> yeah. I want to get into that right now. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe another video. But yeah, um, yeah, so, yeah. yeah. So um, this just be at the end. I'll cut this off the video, but you and I can keep talking. Um, yeah, yeah. so that was good and I, so Rock and Annie uh, these tigers go wild if you guys put much energy into that because you're you're busy living your life uh, which yeah. is great a little, a little envious that you guys get to spend so much out time outside continually yeah, yeah. Uh, but anytime you're up in Michigan I'd love to have you guys back again yeah. come hang out with us no I definitely want to come back and try to do some collaborative events um, just again like to ensure that's what you not that ensure that's what we want to do, but I think about, you know, seeing a, a production based farm here versus a homestead with wellness events. Um, yeah. Like that's really after like kind of cutting our teeth for these past several months. Um, I think that's really having a space for people to come visit and develop the skills, learn about food systems, but then, you know, being able to support a community with those, like I don't want like 15 pigs and like, you know, two dozen cows and like 30 sheep, right? Like that's, that's a lot to take care of or, you know, if you're creating a wellness space and that's something I really want to cut more of my teeth on is hosting those like 
farm to table events in nature, curating movement spaces, et cetera, and bringing people out to recharge, right? To get to baseline. Cause let's be honest, people in civilization aren't even at baseline. So they need to come yeah. out away, eat real food, spend real time in nature, lock their fucking phones away in a box for the whole weekend yep. and go, oh, okay, like now I have some clarity. How can I look back to move forward? Right. Yeah. Um, and just like, you know, target those weekend warriors, but not in the Iron Man sense where people are like, oh, I'm a weekend warrior. I do like 100 miles on the bike. Like, no, come out and actually like get healthy. Um, yeah. So, you know, I'd love to do more events to really like, OK, what works and what doesn't work? What do people want? Um, so, yeah, love to come out there with Uncivilized and do that stuff. Well, good. Um, we'll have you up. Uh, well, uh, I'm going to say thanks at this point and I'll just hit the end of the video and then you and I can keep chatting. So yeah, that's uh, good. Uncivilized Vitality, like, share it, leave some comments. Um, leave some comments below if you want to get in touch with Rock and Annie and find out more what they're doing or if you want to hear more and just uh, follow along. So that's it.